Well, many thanks to Session Chair for his introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jimin Hu from Peking University. My paper is titled, Is Gaze a Data-Driven I-Head Coordination Model for Real-Time Gaze Prediction? In the title, the phrase I-Head Coordination refers to the coordinated movements between eyes and the head. Let's start with the motivation of our work. Nowadays, eye tracking technology has gained more and more importance in the area of virtual reality. They can be applied to wear content design, gaze, gaze contingent rendering, eye movement based interaction, and etc. However, when it comes to the solution to eye tracking in virtual reality, here comes the problem. Right now, we only have a, we only have a, software, we only have a hardware solution which requires a device called an eye tracker. It's accurate, but it's expensive, and it lacks ease of use. Then an idea comes to my mind. It will be interesting and meaningful to propose a software solution that checks gate position without using any special devices. This is the motivation of our work. Now let's have a brief review of prior work on gate prediction. An important work is silence prediction. Silence prediction ends at predicting the silence map of an image. Silence map is a density map of eye fixations. Unlike silence prediction, our goal is to predict a user's real-time gaze position. Specifically, our contributions are listed as follows. First, we propose a novel eye-hand coordination model called S-Gaze. Second, we propose a novel gaze prediction method based on our model. Furthermore, we build a data set for gaze prediction and provide a thorough analysis of our data. Finally, we apply our model to gaze contingent rendering. Here is, here is my talk outline. I will start with the data collection and data analysis. Then I will introduce the i had coordination model and our prediction method. Finally, I will show you our results, limitations, and future work. In the data collection process, totally 60 users participate in our experiments. We use seven indoor and outdoor scenes as our stimuli. The scenes are static and soundless. We utilize HTC Wave to display our scenes and an eye tracker to record users' real-time gaze positions. In the experiments, Users are asked to freely explore the scenes and they are given no task. We collect the real-time scenes viewed by the observers, their gaze positions, and their head poses. Here is a short video that shows our experiment environment and the data collection process. To analyze users' head movements, we set a coordinated system coordinated system for head velocity, which is a relative coordinated system. We classify the domain of head velocity into three separate regions, static region, intentional move region, and sudden move region. Static region, namely the red region in the picture, refers to the condition when the users move their head, uh, when the users move their heads slightly or not at all, Intentional move region, namely the orange region in the picture, refers to the situation when head movements are intentionally driven by the users themselves. Sudden move region, namely the blue region, is the region within which head movements are caused by sudden accidents. The method to determine the boundaries of the regions is presented in my paper, and I won't go into the details in my presentation. Here is a table that shows the distribution of data in different regions. We can see from the table that most of the data lies in the intentional move region. To analyze the correlation between eye movements and head movements, we employ Pearson's correlation coefficient, or PCC for short. PCC is an indicator for measuring linear correlation we calculate the PCCs between gaze position and head velocity in different regions, and find that head rotation velocity has a strong linear correlation with gaze position in a certain range. The linear correlation means 
If you turn left or right your head, you are likely to look left or right. If you turn up or down your head, you are likely to look up, uh, to look up or down. We also calculate the PCCs between gaze position and head acceleration. We find that I had a linear correlation is stronger in the horizontal direction than in the vertical direction. Since the li linear correlation between gaze position and head acceleration in the vertical direction is so small, we neglect its influence. We further calculate a series of PCCs between eye movements and head movements and find that eye movements usually happen before head movements. We also analyze saccades. <coughs> Saccade refers to fast eye movement. We calculate the amplitude of saccades and find that long saccades seldom occur in free exploration condition. Prior works on gauge prediction only consider the influence of content and the test. However, based on our analysis, we argue that head movements should also be considered. Therefore, we propose a novel eye-head coordination model called s gaze which considers gaze behavior as a combined influence of head movements, content, task, and other factors. In this paper, we mainly focus on the influence of head movements. When modeling head movements, we take I had a linear correlation and I had a latency into consideration. Since eye movements happen before head movements to predict the gaze position, we first predict head velocity. Specifically, we utilize the current velocity and the average acceleration to predict the velocity in the near future. In our model, we reveal that head velocity has a linear, correlation, has a linear influence on gaze position. However, the influence of head velocity differs in different situations. Thus, we find it better to adaptively determine the influence of, velo of velocity. Specifically, we, we fit the influence by utilizing the standard deviation of velocity. We also extract the silence map uh, of the scenes. We first calculate the silence map by using SM ResNet. Then we extract the most salient region from the silence map and use it as a salient position. In our method, we predict gaze position by combining the adaptively determined influence, the predicted velocity, the acceleration, and the salient position. To evaluate the performance of our model, we introduce some baselines, namely the screen center, the mean of all the gaze positions, and the salient position. We use angular distance, precision, and recall rates as our eva evaluation metrics. We calculate the angular distance between our model and the baselines. The smaller the angular distance, the better the performance. We find that our model performs best in terms of both mean and standard deviation. We also calculate the cumulative distribution function of the angular distance. The higher the CDF curve, the better the performance. The result shows that our model, namely the green line in the picture, performs best when compared with the baselines. We also calculate the precision and recall rates. We find that our model performs better precision rate and higher recall rate. We also conduct an ablation study to evaluate the effectiveness of each component in our model. The smaller the angular distance, the better the performance. The result shows that each component in our model contributes to gaze prediction. This video shows our real-time gaze prediction results. In the video, the green cross refers to the ground truth, the red one refers to our method, and the blue one refers to mean baseline. This video shows our gaze prediction results in different scenes. As we can see, our model outperforms the baseline in most of the time. 
We apply our model to gaze contingent rendering. Gaze contingent rendering is a technique that decreases the rendering quality in the peripheral region while maintaining high quality in the forward region. We conduct a Euler study to confirm the effectiveness of our model. And the result shows that our model is significantly better than the baseline. This video shows the application of our model to gaze contingent rendering. The result shows that gaze contingent rendering can be achieved using our model. Although our model focused on no task situations, we also evaluate our model's performance on simple tasks, like count the trees and look for balls. We find that although our model performs worse than no task situations, it still outperforms the baselines when there exists a small, a small sim, a simple task. Our model also has some limitations. First, our model is limited to free exploration condition. Users are given no task in our experiments. Second, our scenes are soundless. We do not consider the influence of sound. Finally, our scenes are static. There are no moving objects in our scenes. As for future work, we will extend our model to task-oriented situations. We will take the influence of sound into consideration. We will explore dynamic scenes. Since we provide a larger data set, it will be interesting to propose a deep learning model using our data. Here are some take-home messages. Head-post data can facilitate gaze prediction. Head rotation velocity has a strong linear correlation with gaze prediction in a certain range. Eye movements <coughs> usually happen before head movements. Gaze contingent rendering can be achieved using our model. The data set and our source code are all available, available on my project website. You can visit if you are interested in our work. My talk is over. Thank you for your listening. Uh, thank you. When we're doing question and answer, could the uh, next person uh, set up, please? And we have a questioner here. Hi, Ana from Universidad de Zaragoza. So really nice work. I was wondering if uh, either during the analysis or in the final model, you took into account somehow the vestibulo ocular reflex. Like when you move your head, the eye also moves to, to keep the, the image in the retina uh, stable. So did you take this into account somehow? Um, uh, sorry, you mean, uh, uh, you mean, uh, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, we, uh, when test our model, the users are, uh, yeah, our model performs when performs, performs better when uh, users move their head, move their heads. You say we uh, we separate the uh, head velocity into three regions. Uh, the eye head coordination performs the best in the intentional move region. If you, yeah, you say if you, uh, if if I uh, still my head, head, I I don't move my head, I can, but I can move move my eyes. Then, uh, in this situation, it will be much harder to predict my case position. Thanks. I have a question. Yeah. Please. So, you have a really interesting system in that you're predicting it, but then you know the truth. Yes. Okay. So, I don't want to know, as a person to evaluate, your evaluation based on some simple, uh, simple baseline. Yes. That's simplistic. What I want to know is compared to the truth. You say you could predict, yes. say, because you want to do foveated rendering. Yes. So you say, what I want to know is if you need to predict, say, a 30 milliseconds ahead or 100 milliseconds ahead, what percentage of the time can you do it with a certain accuracy? Do you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah I want to know compared to the truth. Yeah, yeah, you say, in fact, in fact, we, uh, uh, our model and the baselines, they are all, they, they all compared to the ground truth. We have the ground truth. That's the, uh, the. You didn't show that. I, I show that. That's the. No, you the, said you compared to 
Uh, yes. You compare it to baseline. Yeah, is that yeah, the ground yeah. truth? Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, it's, maybe it's a misleading uh, word. Uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, the, the truth is that uh, our model, uh, the baseline, we all compare to the ground truth. We have the ground truth, the eye tracking data, and, uh, that, and we find our model performs, uh, performs better than the baseline. That's how, we, that's how we evaluate our results. You cannot do better than the truth. Yeah, of truth course. is, yeah, of course. no, the truth is you predicting eye tracking, yeah. say 30 milliseconds ahead. Then you actually measure it 30 milliseconds later, so you know the actual truth. So you said you're, you do better than the truth. You said you do better than the baseline. Yeah. But that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is what percentage of the time can you be within a half a degree of the truth? Do you understand the truth? Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, thank you. 